Let's get right into this, shall we? All right, let's delve ourselves into these batch notes and see what we can accomplish. What we can accomplish. Let's go. So, the biggest thing we got in this patch is, of course, the newest god, Kepri. Kepri being a guardian with the most guardian of guardian passives that we probably have yet, comparatively to Kabrakin. Of course, Kabrakin's kit being extremely useless. Kepri not being extremely useless, so we're going to get right into that. Passive Fortitude. Every five seconds, you apply a shield to yourself and allies around you for 3% of your maximum health for 15 seconds. So as far as I'm aware, that means you get three times. No, max 15%. You can get up to 15% of your max health in shield. This rate is slowed down to every 10 seconds while in combat, but that means it will proc in combat, which means you could be about to die, get a 3% max HP shield, get hit by an auto attack, and live from it and get away. Just saying, it's gonna happen at some point. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Continuing onward, Abduct. What seems to be one of his main skills right now, Abduct, this is gonna be like his one of his premium skills out of his set. Keep lunges forward, think Sobek dash, it's essentially the same range, same length, maybe a little bit shorter, that's what it looks, exactly what it looks like. Does good damage at max rank actually, okay scaling for Guardian 40%. Uh, when you connect with an enemy, you latch onto them, and you can pull them backwards only, and it cripples them and silences them. You can still be auto attacked while you're doing this, but they cannot jump away or anything unless they beads or whatever to get out. It is a cripple, it is a silence, they just cannot use abilities. Rising Dawn, this is going to be your skill you get at level 1 on him. Uh, this is your lane clear. So it does, it takes away, reduces physical protections by percentage, percentage physical protection reduction. Starting at 5% up to 25%. That's a shit ton of physical protection reduction, by the way. And also deals 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, plus 5% of magical power. Who cares? Damage every 0.3 seconds for 3 seconds. But that does mean that this skill at level 1 does, you know, without reduction, 120, uh, 120 damage bleed over three seconds. Plus, it's at a pretty long length. Think like Isis Spirit Ball. And it does damage all the way through that. Which means this guy's lane clear is going to be insane. Level one, he's doing 120 damage to the wave. He can do it super safe. It's 10 second cooldown. Only 40 mana cost. Super cheap. Going to be super strong. And the best part that makes the skill OP. So you use it early game for the lane clear. But late game, 50%. 50% reduced damage. 50% reduced damage from enemies for three seconds. It's essentially like a shell, but twice as good for, for, for three seconds. OP! OP! Alright, I'm just saying, that skill is gonna be not so, dude. Not so! Damn! Who came up with that idea, man? 50%! That's gotta get nerfed. It's gonna be like 30% max. That's gonna that's that's straight gonna get nerfed. Alright, Solar Flare. This is like a fairly regular skill uh, as far as uh, his kit goes with crazy skills. Uh, basically, you put down a little AoE circle, like looks like half a second later, maybe a second later, a root comes down, bada bing, it's a medium sized circle, it's a medium sized delay. Uh, root for 1.3 seconds to level one, not bad. Does pretty much no damage, it's pretty much just a CC root. Uh, that's pretty much the extent of that skill. Now, the most unique part of Kepri's kit is her ultimate. His ultimate, her ultimate. Pretty sure it's a guy. Kepri looks like looks like a guy. Looks like a big ass dude. Anyway, biggest character in the game, by the way. Fun fact. Kepri is the largest character currently in Smite. If you see him like comparatively to other guardians, he's like this big hulking, like blah blah, I'm blocking everything. Like, if you build him tanky and you just like stand in front of your guy, you, you can't get past this dude. He's so big. So big, dude. So Back to his ultimate. You use the ultimate. It's a cleanse like Geb shield. Okay. Takes away the CC. Okay. Grants you 25 power, 5 to 25 power scaling. Grants you 20 to 40 movement speed. Immunity to slows. And if you were to die, if you were to die while it was on you, it instead revives you at Kepri's location. It pulls you to Kepri basically after you die and revives you with 40 to 60% of your max HP 
and it's on a 90 second cooldown and it lasts for five seconds. So you have five seconds to die while it's on or they don't kill you for five seconds because it's on you they don't want you to revive and you have five seconds of free farm going ham Zapman style Apollo. Bah, 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 bah. Not to mention you have increased power and movement speed. Ooh, ooh, kill him. Going to be sick. Gonna be sick, dude. That skill is gonna be popping. Popping. I'm loving it, digging it. All right, move on to new skins. Looks like we got a tier two for Anubis. Looks actually, the card looks amazing, actually. We looked here at the card. Super cool card for this skin, actually. Uh, nothing crazy, no like new effects or anything, but super cool card. Uh, Renegade Willick skin, this does have new effects on it. Uh, everything is like reddish uh, tinted now. Cool card, cool skin. Uh, I imagine this is gonna be like a 600 gem skin. I believe that's what that tier goes for. And Gamma Slam Cabracken, another uh, pretty high tier skin. Looks like it had, uh, looks like I believe it had new effects on it. Not 100% sure uh, though, uh, but it does look like a pretty cool skin, but it's Cabracken. You're not gonna play Cabracken anyway. And all for one Freya. They keep they, the ton of good skins in this one. Uh, basically, we have like a Conquistador type Freya skin. It makes like, uh, what's the, what's the show called? Okay, what was that movie called? In a book, I can't remember right now. Why well, can't I remember that? You killed my father, prepared to die. Why can't I remember the name of that right now? Anyway, Princess Bride is the name of that, by the way. It makes that joke really good. Really, really uh, good skin. Uh, custom effects, custom voice lines, the whole, the whole deal, and uh, you know, the hat. So, looking down, Capri has his recolor. Medusa finally got her gold legendary diamond skins, so it's about time that she got those. Of course, the voice packs in for the Willick skin, the Cabracken skin, and the Freya skin. Those all have new voice packs with those. New emotes for uh, Capri. Who cares? Updated God cards. So basically, Vimana has his uh, card updated. Uh, same skin, nothing changed with it. It just has an updated card. You know, looks more uh, like what it should be. Arena now has grass added. A little bit weird, but basically it has grass added and as the match goes on, the grass starts to fade as like the minions are running over it. Pretty cool, little extra effect in the map just to give it a little bit more uh, unique feel. So, miscellaneous things go, blah, blah, blah. Emote titles not showing. God page showing incorrect values for attack speed. Whatever. Miscellaneous fixes. So item fixes, slash not fixes, but uh, buffs and nerfs and whatnot. These are gonna be pretty interesting. So, Breastplate of Valor got a buff. It lowered the price and it lowered the mana. So basically it gave 550 mana, which who needed 550 mana? So now it gives 300, that's plenty of mana. And it reduced the cost from 2300 to 1950. The rest of the stats stayed the same. And it reduced the price of the tier two for that. Mana going from three to 200, price going from 1100 to 950. This means it's easier to build into Breastplate of Valor, as well as it's cheaper to build into it uh, at the start. So it gives, still gives all the physical protection, it gives all 25% cooldown reduction, and it gives just a little bit less mana, but for less price. Overall, positive change for Breastplate of Valor. You might see it built more often now. It's definitely more viable. Shield of Regrowth, all they did was increase the movement speed bonus from 25 to 35%, and increase the duration from two to four seconds. Will you see it now? Maybe kind of trolly, but I just can't imagine that you would replace a full item with Shield of Regrowth. Yeah, Shield of Regrowth is cheap. Yeah, it's okay. Just, I just, I don't see it working in the build still just with the, 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 the lack of stats that it gets. Although the passive is pretty troll, honestly. One of the biggest item buffs this game goes to Soul Eater. Prepare to see Soul Eater all over the place, guys. Here we go. Increase attack speed from 10 to 15. Increase the base life steal from 15 to 20. The aura now gives 15 physical power and 10 physical protection. And it removed the physical life steal aura from the passive. Basically, this is gonna be a great boxing item. Attack speed, life steal, physical power, physical protection. What? Plus it gives what, 300 health as well. Plus the 300 health that it gives, it's gonna be like the ultimate like F you hunter v hunter item. If you get as a hunter, there's no way the other hunter can box you, dude. There's no way. If he doesn't get it and you get it, you done ski. I bet you hunters have to work in that item now. I bet you Zatman's gonna figure out a way to do it. Ally's gonna figure out a way to do it. Barracuda figure out a way to do it, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know how the build's gonna be, but that item is so strong. All right. 
So, Celestial Helm increased magical power uh, from 40 to 60. Who cares? I don't think uh, anybody's going to uh, actually pick up Celestial Legion Helm. I still don't see it being picked up. Uh, not the best item in the game. Get 20 more fish, magical power. Will be built maybe as a last item now because it gives like 100 uh, total. So, Celestial Legion Helm uh, increased. Oh, that's what I just talked about. Runic Shield is what I meant to talk about. New passive. Oh, or, yeah. Hey, thank you, Jax209, for the sub. I appreciate it. Everybody in chat, flex for Jack, our newest friend. Thank you so much for joining the Twitchy community. Talking about Runic Shield. Also, cut that on Soul Leader. It's 100 health now, not 300 health. There was a typo in the previous uh, segment. It is just 100 health on Soul Leader, not 300. So that is, you know, not quite as strong. Runic Shield, new aura. Basically, it's Witchblade for Freya, Kronos, Alquang. New passive, all enemies have their magical power reduced by 50 and attack speed reduced by 20%. This is straight F you Freya, Kronos, Quanger, get out my face. Get out my face. I'm gonna build this item because you're a disgrace. Poof, pop him, dude. Get out my face, Dunsky. Let's go. Also, people, once again, are going back and saying that Soul Leader is actually 300 still health, not 100. We're gonna have to get in game to find out. I'm pretty sure I was right the first time when I said 300, but the chat made me double guess myself. 300 health on Soul Leader, and it's Telkine's ring that only has 100 health. We'll get to that later. And Sile got a bit of a buff. Uh, gives you less magical protections now. You get the full 15% cooldown reduction right off the start. And for stacks now, you gain health. Four health per stack, 60 stacks. You're looking at 60, 120, 180, 240 health max stack. Not bad, it's gonna take you a long time to get the 60 stacks, it's okay. Not the worst. Will you build it still? I don't know, it's still kind of expensive, give or take. Warden Shield, reduce magical protection from 40 to 35. Whoa. Uh, something that might be interesting, reduce the base cost of the Chanted Buckler from 820 to 750. Um. And then increase the 70 later on in the second tier. But this may allow you to build into the tier one uh, earlier, getting that uh, 10 physical and magical defense right off the start. Um, not the worst, not the best, um, but interesting, but interesting. Reduced health on Silver Talisman from 200 to 125. So basically, Silver Talisman performing too well, giving 200 health and 45 magic protections for 1225 gold. All they did was reduce the health by 75. Still going to be a strong item, uh, Tier 2. Just won't be quite as strong. You're going to want to work into your Heart Word a little bit faster than before. Heart Seeker Doom Orb. You can get them in Assault now, dude. They brought it back. Heart Seeker and Doom Orb are back, y'all. They're going to be OP. No, they're not. Please. Telkine's Ring no longer provides magical protections, now provides 100 health. You know, give or take a little exchange, health is good, particularly you want Telkine's Ring early, which means health is better than later. It said 300 health at the, uh, in, the, in the broadcast, it was actually only 100 health, 300 would have been OP, 100 is more in line, probably pretty good. So, Alquang, fixed polynomial on passive, activating a target when a max range, doesn't matter, Ash has a fix. Big change coming to the Pwash. Fleeting Breath fixed the skill dealing unintended bonus damage. Uh, the bonus damage was counting an extra heal stack, so that got nerfed. And Empty the Crypts no longer slows enemy hit by wraiths. You are no longer trapped inside the ultimate tread ring long, getting slowed by the one going No, you're fine. You can walk right out of the ultimate. Honestly, this could kill Pwash. This could be the end of Posh. You have to build Gem of Isolation now on him. He's still going to be annoying level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As you know, he has the really high burst damage. Because he loses the burst damage, he has no way to really peel from himself anymore. I think this is really going to kill his team fight. Uh, I think he's gone. Athena fixed being able to reset her basic attack progression when spam canceling the ability. Okay. A Defender of Olympus fixed her arrival FX. Fixed audio from persisting after death. Just bug fixes. So, bada bing, bada boom. A Willix fixed knockup duration, being shortened if the target was jumping. Interesting. A little bug fix. Fixed an issue where she could not pull who you during Dying Bomb. Also a bug fix. Willix, a little bit stronger. Bacchus fixed some missing voice lines when destroying objectives. Who cares? Bologna got a nerf because thank the Lord. 
Shield Bash now has a stacking slow. In terms of when you level up the skill, you get more slow. It used to start at 30%, now it starts at 15, going up to 35. It's more at max rank, but it's less early, which is what matters. It was the worst getting 30% slowed by level 1 below or whatever. That was nasty. And Eagle's Rally increased cooldown from 70 uh, to 75 seconds in all ranks. Ultimate, ranking up your ultimate no longer gives you increased cooldown on your ultimate. Uh, or decreased cooldown, that is. Poof. Peace out, Bologna. She's still going to be super strong, but at least she won't be like... Like every four seconds, man. So. Chug! Fixed mana displays. Woo! Crap, Chunga. Improve the accuracy of the arc. Cool, that can be annoying sometimes. You can miss it when you clearly hit somebody and you're like, ah, uh, pretty trying. Freya updated. Blah, 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 blah. Give him a card of passive. Fix getting stuck on top of arena walls. Interesting. Loki updated. All right. Fix stab animation. Mixed colored teeth. Neja, fix being able to go inside towers, interesting. Fix Neath stuff, fix Nox stuff, fixing Osiris. Ravana, Ravana gets another buff because he still is just average. So what did we do to Ravana? Overhead kick, reduce the cooldown, fantastic. Reducing cooldowns always makes gods better. And increased damage, flat, perfect, look at that. 55 at rank 1 to 70 and 195 to 210. So it looks like about 15 at each rank. All right, it's better than nothing. 10 hand shadow fist. Increased health return by a little bit, by about five, whatever. Increased damage by about five and then 15 and then more and then more and then more. It does more as you go along. Mystic Rush still sucks. Now there's that. Rana Tascar is out of the game. He got nerfed so hard. They were like, yo, rat. Yo, rat, I see you, though. I see you, though. But I'm just gonna pop you right out of the game. Get out of my house, rat. You so broken. Now you're gonna be nothing. You nothing. Dart can only travel thrice. No more six dashes. You get three. Uno, dos, tres. That's all you get. You get two resets in your Dunsky. Also, decrease the range from 40 to 35. You can't quite dash as long. The ultimate also now has a charge up time from 1 second to 1.5, so you can't just like immediately pop up in the air. Get out my face, rat. You're done. I ain't gonna have to ban you and rank no more because now Fenrir is really gonna destroy you, bud. Boom. Peace. Sylvanas got an itty bitty nerf. His passive will now only proc on melee attacks, not ranged attack, the passive being the root. Uh, so now you, when you get attacked say, by an ADC, you won't get rooted. This is a fairly strong nerf for the laning phase. If you're turning on to Sylvanas trying to kill him, uh, a lot of the times you would get rooted as an ADC and then get out of auto attack range so you couldn't get the last couple autos in. Now you will be able to do that. Uh, you will not get stopped unless you're Uller and you jump in and you melee him and you get rooted and then you switch your bow anyway because you're in range. Chibolanke, Branching Bola, fix the FX turning off after recalling. And that's that. And that is that. That's the patch. That was a very good patch. I don't know if there's anything in that patch that I dislike.